Good to have you with us at this hour. I'm Daniel Chef for Arirang News. Let's start with our first story. Pyongyang has given its first reaction to a South Korean intelligence agency report about the execution of North Korea's defense chief Hyun Young Chul, but the regime refrained from offering any hints about the validity of the claims, rather, issued more colorful threats South Korea's way. Our Hwang Sung Hee reports. A fire shower for the South Korean leader. That was the threat issued by North Korea on Sunday if Seoul continues to offend its leadership. South Korea's National Intelligence Service said last Wednesday that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's closest aides, including defense chief Hyun young Char, had been executed. It added that 70 senior officers had been removed since 2012 as part of the young leader's efforts to consolidate his power. Pyongyang's propaganda website, Uri Minjokiri, claimed that Seoul was insulting its leadership with expressions like purge politique and fear politique, warning of a military strike if the insults continue. But the site stopped short of confirming or denying the report about the latest purges. North Korea's reaction to the report, its first, comes amid lingering doubts about the spy agency's conclusion. While the North state-run media typically deletes all records of removed officers, it has continued to show recorded footage featuring the defense minister, even in the period after he was supposedly executed. For example, an online search of North Korean media sites for Kim Jong-un's uncle Chang song Tech, who was put to death in 2013, only brings up stories relating to his arrest, purge and execution. But with Pyongyang slamming Seoul without giving a clear answer on the fate of the defense chief, some North Korea watchers say the reports about Hyun's execution are most likely true. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. And it looks like joint anniversary celebrations to be organized by civic groups from the two Koreas are in jeopardy as the two sides are having trouble narrowing their differences. North's state-run Korea Central News Agency reported that the main points of disagreement are the nature and location of the events. The civic groups have been discussing plans to commemorate two historical milestones, one event in June marking the 15th anniversary of a historic inter-Korean summit and another in August, marking the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japan. It's been five years since the two Koreas commemorated the summit together. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry arrived in Seoul on Sunday evening for a two-day visit. Kerry is scheduled to hold talks with South Korean Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se on Monday, followed by a joint press conference. The two top diplomats are expected to discuss the details of President Bakunet's U.S. visit next month, as well as North Korea's nuclear program and other regional and global issues. U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is also set to visit South Korea on Monday. During his five-day stay, he will attend the U.N.-led World Education Forum and meet with President Park, senior officials and lawmakers. The world of mobile payments is evolving. Smartphone companies are developing their own mobile payment systems, and there are more mobile payment apps than ever before. And now we've come to the next phase, virtual ones that don't even require companies to issue the plastic cards. Our Shin Zemin gives us a glimpse of this system. Say goodbye to plastic credit cards. Local card companies can now issue mobile credit cards without having to issue a physical card first. The Financial Services Commission approved the change last month, adding a new dimension to the mobile payment landscape. It costs roughly 14 U.S. dollars to make and ship a plastic credit card, but a mobile card costs nothing. We hope this cost-cutting measure will benefit our clients. To issue the virtual cards, the car company contacts the client and puts them through a process to verify their identity. To make a purchase, all the cardholder has to do is wave the phone in front of a card reader. It's convenient and easy to use, however, there are still a few drawbacks. As credit cards move on to our smartphones, there are still lingering concerns about hacking and security. 
And if the phone is lost, the cardholder is still responsible for all transactions made 60 days prior to the reported loss, regardless of who made the purchases. But perhaps the biggest deterrent is a low number of outlets that accept mobile payments of any kind. Of the 2.6 million registered shops or restaurants in Korea, only 50,000, or 1.8 percent, have mobile card readers. But with smartphones becoming a more prominent facet of our daily lives, experts believe that it's only a matter of time before the demand for mobile credit cards increases. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. And foreign tourists to Vietnam who are already exempt from visa requirements will soon be allowed to stay in the country longer than before. The Vietnamese government has instructed police and relevant agencies to cooperate with the tourism ministry to let tourists from visa-exempted countries to stay for 30 days instead of the old 15. The move is part of efforts to waive tourist visa requirements for countries with high tourism potential or those that have a strategic partnership with Vietnam. Before the change, visa-exempt tourists were allowed to stay for only 15 days per visit, and they even had to wait for at least 30 days before their next entry. Currently, tourists from Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Japan, Russia, and South Korea are eligible for Vietnam's visa waiver policy. The exact date of when the change will be implemented is not yet known, though. A group of 24 Korean medical volunteers who served in Ebola-stricken Sierra Leone from December to March was recently conferred medals in recognition of their dedication, hard work, and contribution to elevating Korea's reputation in the world. Our Choi yoo Sun reports on the challenges they face, their courage, and how they take pride in their service to their country. When President Park Geun-hye announced her decision to deploy Korean medical workers to Ebola hit West Africa last October, the administration initially faced questions about their safety. The three teams of a total of 24 medical workers were Korea's first emergency personnel sent overseas in response to an outbreak, and their safe return has bolstered the administration's confidence in the capabilities of Korea's medical community. In a meeting with the medical personnel at her office recently, President Bak said she was impressed that so many of them had volunteered to be part of the team, despite the possibility of exposure to the deadly virus. Dr. Choi Young-mi was at high risk of Ebola infection after one of her fingers came into contact with an infected needle. When the accident happened, instead of worrying about whether I would contract Ebola, I despaired at the thought of whether I'd be forced to leave Sierra Leone. The team faced other challenges, including scorching heat during the day and having to work in shift through the night. But they said that receiving a show of appreciation from the locals and feeling like they'd made a contribution to the health of humanity and world peace made it all worthwhile. The locals gave us a thumbs up saying, Korea, after hearing about the work we did, they said Koreans work really hard and we became good friends. The presidential office says Seoul will use the experience to bolster Korea's ability to counter an outbreak and seek more ways to play a role in providing international humanitarian aid in the future. Choi yoo Arirang News. We move our focus to the ongoing war against IS. U.S. Special Operation Forces have reportedly killed a senior Islamic State official and captured his wife in Syria early Saturday after staging an overnight ground raid. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter said the mission was originally an operation to capture Abu Sayyaf, but about a dozen militants were killed, including the target. Sayyaf, a Tunisian, is described as a fairly high-ranking commander by U.S. officials, but he is not among the four most senior militants. Carter said Delta Force troops flew in from Iraq and touched down near eastern Syrian oil fields that the Islamic State group has tapped for black market fuel sales. Then they engaged in close combat against militants who used women and children as human shields. The defense secretary added that no American soldiers were killed or injured in the operation. Many Koreans get excited whenever foreign films, namely Hollywood ones, get shot here. But the results are not always very positive, and critics say Koreans often get an unfair shake in Hollywood films. Our Won Ji-an takes a closer look at Tinseltown's various portrayals of Korea. 
a destructive battlefield, the birthplace of Ebola and the site of a zombie outbreak. All of these are depictions of Korea in Hollywood films. This past weekend, The Avengers Age of Ultron broke 9 million in ticket sales at the Korean box office just three weeks after its release. The film was partially shot in Korea, which helped attract local viewers. But many of them left theaters disappointed with the way Korea was shown on screen. I thought it would be really cool to see Korea in the film, but the movie only showed dirty alleyways, which was disappointing. The results were even more disappointing for the Korean government. Last year, the culture ministry offered millions of dollars in incentives for the Avengers to be filmed in Seoul. The hope was that the movie would do for Korea what Avatar and Lord of the Rings had done for China and New Zealand, both of which saw great benefits in their tourist revenue after stunning locations from those countries were featured in the films. However, critics say it was money wasted for Korea as the Avengers only shows the capital as a backdrop for fight scenes where most locations get destroyed. In order for Korea to see better results, experts say the government should only approve conditional incentives in future agreements. Won ji Hyun, Arirang News. Lesson learned there. Now moving on to weather. Cloudy skies are expected in most parts of the nation on Monday, with some light rain in the forecast for Jeju and the surrounding areas. Seoul lights should be ready for a high of 26 degrees Celsius in the evening with a low of 15. Clearer skies and sunny conditions are in the forecast for Tuesday and the rest of the week. And now let's check out the weather conditions outside of Korea in your neck of the woods and around the world. That's all we could squeeze into this edition of our newscast. Thank you for watching. Here's wishing you a great start to your new week.